revisiting cosine, secant, tangent, and cotangent graphs. That's what we're doing now. And so, um, if you recall, the basic graph of cosecant, it's very much related to sine. And so, what we did when we graphed the basic graph is we graphed a sine wave, and then from that we figured out how to do the cosecant graph. So, um, just as a reminder, um, I'm going to erase this real in a second, but if we had just the cosecant graph, we would do a sine wave, we would graph a sine wave like this, right? And wherever the sine wave crossed the x-axis, that gave us vertical asymptotes, right? And so really, the, the sine wave was not our graph, but it helped form the cosecant graph. They shared one point, and then the cosecant graph was um, bound by these vertical asymptotes, and they would it would go up and down like this, okay? That is a reminder of what, what a cosecant graph is, and so in order to do a good job graphing cosecant graphs, or secant graphs, since um, we got to be really good at sine and cosine. So they're based off of that. And so we just got through practicing sine and cosine, so we should be all right. So let's, let's tackle this. This was just a reminder of, of what it looks like. So these graphs have um, vertical asymptotes. So we're going to be seeing all of those things. So here we go. If they ask us to graph this negative 5 cosecant of pi x over this interval, the first thing we want to do is say, Cosecant relates to sine or cosine. Cosecant is one over the sine, so it relates to sine. So I'm gonna base this graph off of, base this off of y equals to negative five times the sine of pi x. This is what I'm gonna base this graph off of. Now, um, if you look at the things that I've, I, I have us call out here, you'll notice amplitude is in quotation marks because these graphs do not have an amplitude. An amplitude is how high or low a graph goes up and down between. These do not have an amplitude, but since we're basing it off of sine, we sort of have an amplitude that we think about to help us form this graph. This graph also has vertical asymptotes, so I've added this to our list of things to call out. Okay, here we go. Let's graph this guy. And we understand this is not the real graph, but it's gonna help us form the real graph. So here is my x-axis and my y-axis. Let's pick this guy apart. Let's look at the purple and say, okay, um, if we were gonna graph the sine wave, do, what is the, does it have an amplitude? Um, the sine wave does, so this is my kind of false amplitude. Um, five is what it is, okay. Is it reflected? Yeah, because it's, it's negative, so yes. Um, does it have a phase shift? Well, I have this pi next to the x, but this is just the b. I don't have anything extra plus or minus, so I do not, yay, I do not have a phase shift that I have to fool with. Is there a vertical shift? Well, I do not see a plus k anywhere, so no, I don't have to fool with that. So that makes it a little simpler. The period is, for a cosecant, is the same as for sine. It's 2 pi over b, so it's 2 pi over pi, right, because that's our b. So the period is two. The spacing is the period divided by four. So two over four is one half. That's how I'm gonna slice up my x-axis. We will deal with the vertical asymptotes and the range at the end. And there wasn't a vertical shift that we have to contend with either. So let's just start laying out our x-axis in halves. And we have to go as far left as negative three and as far right as three. So this is one half, one, one half, one. This is three halves, two, three halves, two. This is five halves, six, five halves, six. And then I'll go, I mean, not six, six halves, which is three. Okay, let's go the other way. Negative one half, negative one. Negative three halves, negative two. Negative five halves, negative three. So I've laid out my x-axis. Now, um, if we had an amplitude, which we don't, it's gonna go up and down five. So let's mark that one, two, three, four, five. 
one, two, three, four, five, negative five, positive five. Okay. Was there a phase shift? No. Was there a vertical shift? No. Is there a reflection? Yes. Okay. And what graph is this? Sine. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in green because green's kind of a light color. This is not cosecant, this is sine. So this is kind of my my the graph that I form it off of. So um, I'm going to do the sign. I'm going to graph this. So I would start in the middle. I still start in the middle. But since there's a reflection, I go down the next time. So I'm going to go all the way down to negative 5 right here. Negative 5. And then I'm going to go middle. And then I'm going to go up to 5. And then I'm going to go middle. And then I'm going to go down to negative 5. And then I'm going to go middle. Okay. Then we're going to go here. Up. Middle. Down, middle, up, middle. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash. This curve in. Because it is not the real thing. Okay. This is my sine wave that I'm basing it off of. So, while I've got this. Let me mark my vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes will be where your graph, your sine graph crosses the x-axis. So wherever you're, it's hitting the x-axis, these x-intercepts, this is a vertical asymptote. This, maybe I should make that a different color. These are my vertical asymptotes in the blue. Blue, blue, blue. There's a lot of them right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay. Now, let's put our graph on there. Where is the graph? The graph shares one point with the sine wave, and that is at the maximums right here and the minimums right here. Those are the points that they share. The, the rest of them are not. These will go up and down bound between the asymptotes like so. Like so. So let me have a look here and make sure I'm happy with this. Does this look like it should? Um, right there right there right there yeah I like it okay so what will the range of this guy be remember the purple graph is the graph so the range of the purple as low as it wants to go is negative infinity and that's going to go up to negative five and then oops that's a bracket and then it's unioned with there's this big open space where it doesn't exist and then it starts at five to infinity. That's the range. Um, I had to kind of do it in two parts, okay. And then what about the vertical asymptotes? Where are they appearing? They're appearing at negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, at every integer. So this is a convenient way to write this. X equals two N is an equation of the, the vertical asymptotes, where N where n is an integer, where n is an integer. Okay, that is number one. Let's tackle two, secant. Secant goes like this. Secant is based off of cosine. So we're going to think of this, we're gonna graph it's based off of y equals to the cosine of pi x plus pi over 2. But I remember, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that pi because it's got a phase shift I can see. So let's go ahead and start getting ourselves ready. Pi times x plus 1 half is what that's going to look like. All right, let's tackle this. Um, maybe I want this one to be in blue. I'll do this one based 
off of y is the cosine pi times x plus one half. All right, so let's talk about cosine. What's his amplitude? His amplitude is one. So our graph doesn't have an amplitude, but we're gonna base it off of that, which does. Okay, um, is it reflected? No, that's positive. So there's no reflection, okay. Is there a vertical shift? I don't see a plus or minus a number associated with this, so there's no vertical shift. Is there a phase shift? Yes, there is, because I see this little parenthesis. So plus one half indicating left one half. Left one half, okay. Um, what is the period? The period is equal to two pi over b, which is pi, so this is two. So the spacing is going to be 2 divided by 4 or 1 half. That's how I'm going to split up my axis, okay? Um, we'll deal with the range and the vertical asymptotes in just a minute. So we lay our x, y out like this. All right, and we got to go from negative 2 to 2. So let's see. Um, let's start putting this guy on there. Let's say... Uh, one half one two um one half one three halves two all right negative one half negative one negative three halves negative two all right that's the range we had to go in um and then if we were graphing cosine we would start pi. How high? What's the amplitude? The false amplitude is one. Okay. One and negative one. All right. We would start high. Is there a reflection? No. So we still start high, but there is a phase shift. So instead of starting high at one, we're going to move left one half units, and that's where we're going to start our graph, our cosine graph, high. And then we're just going to follow the pattern. Middle, low, middle, high, middle middle, low, middle. And we're just going to connect our points. And I'm going to dash this. I meant to dash this because this is not my real graph, right? This is just my, what I'm basing my graph off of. Now I'm going to lay out my vertical asymptotes. So let me do those. I'll do those in green on this graph. So it's wherever it crosses the x, um, the x-axis. So this is going to be a vertical asymptote here, here. Those are all the vertical asymptotes. So let's write that down. Where are they hitting? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. They're still hitting at the integer. So we can write it this way. When x is n and n is an integer. Those are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. That's where they occur. Uh, let's draw our graph. What is, what is our graph going to look like? I'm going to draw it in black. There's one point that these guys share, and it's the maxes and the mins right here. Right here. So, it's going to go like that. It's bound by the vertical asymptotes. All right, and so what would be the range? The range for this guy is negative infinity, as low as it wants to go till it hits this point, which is, oops, that infinities, don't ever put a bracket on an infinity. This should be parentheses to negative one. And then there's this open gap, and then it starts again at x is one, I mean at y is one, and goes all the way to infinity. So let me just double check this one. See if we're doing good. We are doing good. All right, we got two more graphs, and those are one is tangent and one is cotangent. Now, these guys are a little bit different, and so I put this big thing in bold in the middle of your paper, which says, I like to use the interval method when I am doing sine and um, when I'm doing tangent and cotangent because they're just a little bit different, and so um, the interval method helps me get my graphs on there correctly. That's why I like that. So, I'm going to show you. This is how, what I like to do. You do not, of course, have to do it this way if you are graphing a good method. You do have to graph them by hand, though. All right, so here we go. Um, we're going to sketch y is the tangent of 2x plus pi over 2. 
y is the tangent of 2x plus pi over 2 um, over, over, I, I, ho I hope my R worksheets are the same. I said from negative pi to pi, so that's what I have written down. Um, so we're going to deal with this. Now, before we do tangent, let's just remember what does a tangent graph look like. This is the only graph that does not start at zero. It starts at negative pi over two. It's a little bit different. So if we were going to graph a basic graph, um, negative pi over two, negative pi over four, zero, pi over two, pi over four. If you look back at where we first did our basic tangent graph, this is what you would see. They do have vertical asymptotes, okay? And then we would go up and down um, one unit, and the one comes from the one being in front of this. So if we have a different number in front of our tangent, like three or four, this would be three or four, whatever that number is, okay? Um, and then the pattern that this falls is asymptote, and then it goes low, middle, high at these little spacings, and then it goes in here. So the range for these guys are negative infinity to positive infinity. They don't have an amplitude either, just like the cosecant and the secant. So these are the things I have listed for us to fill in um, the period. So here's the big deal. The period, okay, the period for tangent and cotangent is pi. So this is different too. The period is pi for tangent and the cotangent. That's a big deal. Tangent starts at negative pi over two, and this is the big deal. He starts at a different place, okay? So one period for tangent, for the tangent of x, he usually goes from negative pi over two to pi over two. That is his typical interval. Now that's gonna become important because I said I'm gonna use interval method on this one because it helps me not mess up my graphs, okay? So let us see, where are we gonna, period, spacing, period, spacing, vertical shift, uh, phase shift, reflection, um, vertical asymptotes. And you could also say, uh, what is sort of the amplitude here? It's not an amplitude, but it's just, what is A? What is A? Okay, we'll, we'll take note of that. Okay. All right, so this is what we're about to tackle. Just keep in mind, this is the basic graph, okay, of tangent. So, uh, the period is equal to two, I mean, not two pi, it's equal to pi over b for tangent and cotangent. So the period is pi over b. What is b in this case? Well, b is whatever is with the x, so it's two. So this is pi over two. That's the period for this graph. Okay, the spacing is still pi divided, p, the period divided by four, same. So pi over two divided by four, is gonna be pi over eight, that's my spacing. Is there a vertical shift? No, I don't see a plus or minus any number right there, so no. Is there a phase shift? Yes, there is. So I'm gonna factor out that too so I can see what the phase shift is. So y is the tangent of two times x plus pi over four is what you get when you factor out a two. It's like you divided pi over two by two to get that. So this is indicating that we're gonna shift this to the left, left, pi over four. All right, is there a reflection? Well, the number in front of the tangent is a one, and so I'm gonna put one for that little a right there, and it's not negative, so no. Um, are there vertical asymptotes? Yes, I'll have to fill that in. now. What do I mean by interval method? This is what I mean. When there's a phase shift, you can, it's easy to kind of get these graphs wrong. So I like to do this for tangent. I say, well, what, what does a normal tangent go by? It normally goes between negative pi over two and pi over two. So what I'm gonna do is set up this interval. Set up, this is for tangent. Set up this 
set up negative pi over 2 is less than something we're going to put in there is less than pi over 2. This is our interval. What are we going to put in there? This, whatever this angle is, whatever that mess is right there, throw that in there. 2x plus pi over 2. Then solve this for x, and this is how you do that. First, you get the 2x by itself by subtracting pi over 2 all three places. So go like this. Minus pi over 2. Minus pi over 2. Minus pi over 2. It's kind of like a three-sided equation. In the middle, pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. So I'm just left with 2x. Over here, pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0, and I get a 0. Over here, negative pi over 2 plus negative pi over 2 is just negative pi is what I get when I add those two numbers together. And so now I need to solve for x by dividing everybody by 2. So I get negative pi over 2 is less than x is less than 0. Why do I do this? Because my graph is going to be right now because this is where I start. This is where I stop in order to get one full cycle. What does this mean? My start means asymptote, asymptote, low, middle, high. That's why this helps me. So let's go to our graph. It's going to be real straightforward now that I've done all that work. Here is my graph. All right. I'm supposed to space my um, axis in pi over 8. So pi over 8, pi over 4. 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4. Uh, 3 pi over 8. Uh, pi, 4 pi over 8 is pi over 2. i got to go all the way to pi. Who wrote this problem? Okay, 5 pi over 8. 6 pi over 8. Four. Seven pi over eight. Eight pi over eight. All right. Then we gotta go all the way backwards pi. Here we go. Negative one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. This is negative pi. Negative pi over eight. Negative pi over four. Negative three pi over eight. Negative pi over two. Negative 5 pi over 8. Negative 3 pi over 4. Negative 7 pi over 8. Okay, there we go. Now that's all labeled. What in the world? How do we start? We have this um, before. Remember the other graphs? We're doing sine, cosine, and I would go, oh, we need to go left pi over 4. When you do interval method, it's going to automatically shift it there for you okay so you don't have to worry about this just you know you've got a phase shift you can you can handle it here so um let's start here we're going to start at negative pi over two how do you start a tangent graph you start it with asymptotes all right and then we've got these three things and then it goes asymptotes so our our y-axis is going to be our next asymptote so it was not reflected, so we still go low, middle, high. This tells us how low and how high to go for these little points. This is not amplitude, but it tells us how low and high to go. Low, middle, high. And so this is our asymptote, so it's going to go like, this is my one cycle that I have right there. It kind of looks like that. So um, we can continue the pattern. Asymptote, low, middle, high asymptote low middle high asymptote so so um let's go backwards asymptote this will be uh high middle low and then asymptote so when you graph it from negative pi to pi you get one two three four four cycles. Let me make sure I'm happy with this graph. Yes. And so um, these are kind of easy to get uh, messed up on if you do it the way we were doing the sign. That's why I like this interval method. Okay. Is there anything else I wanted to point? Oh, vertical asymptotes. Where did they fall? They fell at pi, negative pi over 2, 0, pi over 8, 
pi over two and pi. For these problems, just you can just list them for all the ones in the interval. Just say x is negative pi, pi over two, negative pi over two, zero, pi over two, and pi. That will do for me. This little x equals all of those. All right, I think that is that one. Last one, and we're done. Let's sketch number four. Okay, and this one is a cotangent graph. Okay, so let's recall real quickly, what does cotangent look like um, it's basic in its basic self without anything else going wrong? Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, cotangent graph, cotangent of x, the period is pi, just like tangent. It has asymptotes, just like tangent. What's different is this, like all the other graphs, except for tangent, start at zero. So its interval is, goes from zero to pi to see one, one uh, cycle of cotangent. So this is what a cotangent graph looks like. This is zero, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, four. And then this is pi. This is pi, okay. And so what's different about this is instead of going low, middle, high, like x cubed, it goes high, middle, low. So if this is one and this is negative one, it's gonna go high, middle, low. This is what a cotangent graph looks like. Okay, its range is negative infinity to positive infinity. There is no amplitude and it does have vertical asymptotes. So that's a reminder of it before we dive into the last one, which says sketch the graph of y equals to negative two cotangent of x minus pi over four. Okay, let's just do it. What this, what is the period? Um, spacing, um, vertical shift, phase shift, reflection, um, range, does it, what's its value of A, and is there any vertical asymptotes? Asymptotes. All right, here we go. All right, well, the period is 2 pi. Uh, no, 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 it's cotangent. It's pi over B. But what is B? B is one. So our period is just pi for this graph. Okay, cool. What is the spacing? The spacing is always the period divided by four. So the spacing is pi over four. Okay. Is there a vertical shift? Do I see a plus or a minus K? No. Is there a phase shift? Yes, there is. I see this joint in there. So this is, um, the B is one. So it, this is the phase shift. So it's gonna to go to the right, the right, pi over four. But here's the thing, I'm gonna use interval method because these can get a little messed up. Use the interval method here. So in a minute, we'll do that, okay. Uh, is there a reflection? Yeah, you see that negative? There is a reflection. What is the value of A, which is not the amplitude, it's two. So we'll come back, we gotta do range and we gotta do vertical asymptotes. Okay, so let us do this. I should have been changing colors, but here we go. I'll change from here on out. Let's do the interval. What interval do we set up for cotangent? Well, if for tangent, which its graph was from negative pi over two to pi over two, we set that up. But for cotangent, it graphs go from zero to pi, we set that up. So we're gonna say zero is less than something is less than pi. What do we put in there? This, this, whatever we see right there, that's what we put in there. So let's do that. X minus 
pi over 4. Solve for x. So to solve for x here, we simply need to add pi over 2 all three places. So plus pi over 4, 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. Plus pi over 4 makes that a 0. We just have x. Pi plus pi over 4 is going to be a 5 pi over 4. Um, what interval did they ask us to do this in? From negative 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. Negative 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. Okay, that's what we got to do. What do we split our axis up into? Uh, pi over 4. So let's do that. Let's get busy doing that. Negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4. Zero, okay. Pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. 